Before we begin the demonstration, let's give a general overview of what Flash is. Flash is a multimedia platform commonly used for animation, video, and rich internet applications. Typically, files that were created in Flash have an SWF extension. That SWF stands for Shockwave Flash. What are some things or applications that you can create by integrating Visual Basic .NET and Flash together? Well, the first thing that you could do is you can make your own Flash player to run on your own desktop rather than having to download an application or having to purchase the Flash application itself. So you can make your own desktop player. Another thing that you could do is you could take your actual business applications and make them a little more graphical and jazzier. Now one thing that you can also do is you can interact between Visual Basic .NET and Flash. So if the Flash movie is expecting some action script is what it's called, or some interaction, you can interact between the two applications. Now in this code example, to demonstrate integrating Flash and Visual Basic .NET, we're just going to create a very simple Flash player using Visual Basic .NET. In this demonstration, we're going to be using Visual Studio 2005. However, the steps that you see in this demonstration on 2005 will also work if you are using Visual Studio 2008. The steps will work exactly as demonstrated. To begin, click on File, New, Project. Select Visual Basic, Windows Application, then name your project. In this example, we're going to call it Play Flash, then click OK. Now we're going to begin. Using Flash is a two-step process. The first thing that we have to do is we're going to have to create a reference to the Shockwave Flash. Then we are going to actually add the component. The first thing we do is we add the reference to the project. The Shockwave Flash reference is under the COM tab, so you would select the COM tab, then search for Shockwave Flash. Depending on the version that's on your machine, you'll have a different version number. So if look for Shockwave Flash and select Shockwave Flash. After you select the component and add the reference, you then have to add the control onto your toolbox. You can add it anywhere in your toolbox, but in this demonstration I'm going to add it under the components section because it really is a component. So you right click on components and then look for the menu item, choose items. Select choose items and then after a while it'll pop up. Look for under the toolbar box items, select COM components. The Shockwave Flash falls under the COM component. Browse through the window and look for Shockwave Flash. So it should be toward the bottom of the screen. So as you see on this example we find Shockwave Flash, select that, then click OK and you'll see that it's now added to your toolbox. When you're ready, click and drag on the form. Now in Visual Studio 2005 you'll get an error initially about the ActiveX control. In 2005, you're going to have to rebuild the program a few times before it actually takes, as we're demonstrating here. And then once, once it, you rebuild it a couple times, it'll eventually take. However, if you're running this in Visual Studio 2008, it will work the very first time. The, is the moment you add the COM component and you drag it onto the form, as we see right here, it's going to take right away. However, in 2005, you're going to have to compile the program a few times. Once you add the control, what we're going to do since we're demonstrating a player, we're going to add some buttons. The first button that we're going to add is the stop button. So just click and drag a button and in this example we're going to call it button stop. Now also in this example we're going to make it a little look more like a player rather than words. So rather than write a word on there, we're going to look for an image that we have here that's going to, Im to illustrate the stop. Usually it's the square and we're going to put the square on that button. We're going to remove the text and then resize it as we have here. Notice 
that I fast forwarded a little bit so I didn't have you watch me create all these buttons. But the same process applied. I added a, diff a different button, one for play, one for rewind, and one for fast forward. And I followed the same process where I imported an image and also changed the text. Now also for naming purposes I also renamed the shockwave control on the form. In this illustration, I'm going to, rather than import a file in, I'm going to reference a file that already exists. So what I'm demonstrating here is in my bin directory, and since I'm running in debug mode, I have it in debug, I put a shockwave flash file in that directory so I don't have to be specific. And I'm going to use banner. So then after the banner, I'm going to code the play button first. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to use a with end with loop to act act for my control so because I have a couple of functions that I'm going to call so when we're using the shockwave control I'm going to do a stop first to make sure that everything is clear then I'm going to import the movie so the movie class is equal to wherever that file is so that's how you would import a movie then finally I'm going to play it Now I'm going to code for the stop button. So what I'm going to do is once the user clicks the stop button, I'm going to call the stop function of the shockwave flash object to stop it. Now here's a demonstration. So I play, pl press the play, it plays the movie, then when I click stop, it stops. And now I'm going to code for the rewind button. When the user clicks the rewind button, I'm going to, on the shockwave flash object, call the rewind function. So what that'll do is it'll take it, once I play it and I hit rewind, it's going to take it right back to the beginning, as demonstrated here. Finally, I'm going to code for the fast forward button. So when the user clicks the fast forward button, I'm going to call the forward function of the shockwave flash object. So when they click, it's going to move it all the way forward. So as you can see here, as demonstrated, here's how it works. This is a summary of the shockwave flash object functions and properties that we used in this application. We used the stop, which stops the movie. We used the play, which plays the movie. We used rewind, which rewinds the movie to the beginning. We used forward, which forwards the movie to the end. And finally, we used the movie property, which actually sets the name of the file to play. And of course, if you have any questions, please visit my blog and leave a comment on the post and I will answer the question to the best of my ability. I hope you enjoyed the film. Goodbye.